Hi, welcome to this video on behind the scenes signs of green arrow, dead shot and death stroke. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better more sustainable world so please do subscribe to our channel. Both Green Arrow and Slade Wilson aka Deathstroke are immensely popular characters in the DC franchise. Even Deadshot has a cult following. What's common between all of them? Well, it is the ability to shoot projectiles with precision. Shooting accuracy is a skill that is not easy to develop particularly if you don't have the feel for the science of projectile which is exactly what we will unpack in this video. The range of any projectile be it a bullet or an arrow is dependent upon two things. The initial velocity imparted to the projectile and the angle it is fired at. It is well known fact that if we have to make a projectile travel the furthest then it has to be thrown or shot at an angle of 45 degrees from the horizontal. Athletes who throw the javelin are aware of it and that is why they train their muscles to reach the maximum speed while aiming for a close to 45 degree launch angle. Similarly, artillery personnel also utilize this fact to their advantage. The second factor regarding the range is the launch speed. If you look at the specification for any firearm, you will find a factor called chamber or muzzle velocity. For pistols, the muzzle velocity is relatively lower. For rifles, it is higher. For example, a piston with 9mm caliber rounds has a muzzle velocity of 396 meter per second giving it an effective range of 50 meters. By comparison an AK-47 or Kalashnikov has a muzzle velocity of 715 meter per second giving it an effective range of 350 meters. The Dragunov sniper rifle has a muzzle speed of 830 meter per second and effective range of 800 meters. The relationship for range or distance and velocity is as follows. D is equal to velocity squared times sine of twice the launch angle divided by the acceleration due to gravity. If you look at the equation, it suggests that as the velocity increases, the range goes up considerably. This doesn't take into account the effect of drag. Nonetheless, the principle remains the same that a slight increase in velocity would give you considerable increase in range. The longest sniper kill ever recorded was at a distance of 3450 meters with a weapon called Macmillan TAC-50 rifle. The specification of this rifle indicate a muzzle speed similar to Dragunov that is 805 meter per second but the effective range for this gun is 1800 meters that is more than double the range of Dragunov and this is due to the different bullets used in both guns. This highlights that in addition to chamber speed, the aerodynamics of the bullet are extremely important for maximizing range and accuracy. Wind also plays a vital role in increasing or decreasing the range and crosswinds can also make a bullet or the arrow to drift. Four winds can decrease the range while aft wind can immensely increase the range. Both wind speed and direction are factored in by a sniper or an archer when taking a shot. On a side note, did you know that there is a concept in physics which the rocket scientists call the escape velocity. It is the minimum speed needed for an object to escape from the gravitational influence of a planetary body. The escape velocity from the earth is about 11,186 meter per second or 6.95 miles per second at the surface. That is, if a projectile is fired at this speed, it will require no extra energy for propulsion to escape the gravity of the earth and go into orbit. Let's focus back on weapon projectiles. We have covered the maximum range so far. If we fire the projectile vertically upward, it will surely return because we don't have a gun that can fire projectiles at the escape velocity. However, what speed will the projectile return is the question. Theoretically, if there wasn't any air and thus no air resistance and gravity was the only force acting on the bullet, then the projectile would return at the same speed as it was fired. In other words, a bullet fired vertically 
would return at muzzle speed. However, this is not the case in practice. The bullet or projectile would face wind resistance as it goes up and as it returns. Air drag greatly reduces the speed. In fact, on its way back, a bullet would accelerate only till it reaches a certain velocity. Once that velocity is attained, its speed will increase no more. This peak velocity which a falling object cannot surpass is called terminal velocity and it is because of the air drag. The more frontal area of an object or the area that cuts into the wind, the lower will be the terminal velocity or the slower an object will fall to the ground. The terminal speed of a 0.3 caliber rifle bullet is 92 meter per second which can kill a person. The phenomena of terminal velocity is very well known by wingsuit pilots. The objective of wingsuit is to reduce the terminal velocity to as low value as possible by increasing the surface area that cuts into the wind. This allows the base jumper more time in the air. Now let's look at the curving of a projectile. Sometimes it is shown in the comics and the movies that a gunslinger can curve a bullet particularly if it's fired with fast moving arms. This is untrue. The only thing moving arms can do is change the direction of the bullet at the time it is fired. Once the bullet is out of the gun, it is influenced by gravitational force and wind. However, the effects of both these factors are negligible particularly at a close range. When we talk about archery, however, it is different. One can hit an arrow on a target that is hiding behind an object. In other words, an arrow can be curved. This fact has been recorded in archery books and is a skill that is hard to develop, but it does happen. Danish archer Lars Anderson has popular YouTube videos where he shows in multiple settings how a curved arrow path can be attained and it can hit a target behind an obstacle. The change of path for bullets can be achieved by ricochet. Although this phenomenon is not employed for intentionally changing the bullet path, and it's something that happens accidentally. However, in comics, it is often shown otherwise. The chances of a bullet ricochet are increased if it hits a hard surface and hits it at a shallow angle. There's also another factor called coefficient of restitution. This is a measure of conservation of momentum between two colliding surfaces. Its value has to be high between the bullet and the surface it is supposed to ricochet off. If the coefficient of restitution is low, the bullet is likely to penetrate the surface or cause a partial melt to it. Interestingly, bullets have a high tendency of ricochet if they hit the surface of water at a shallow angle despite water not being a hard surface. This phenomena is similar to skimming stones. The ideal angle for skimming stones is achieved if they are thrown between 20 degrees and 11 degrees from the horizontal. And with this, the video on science behind the shooting projectile is concluded. If you learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you would like us to make a video on a topic of your choice, do mention it in the comment box. Be sure to check out the other videos in our science and engineering from comic book series. Thank you for your attention.